Good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, we are back in better than ever, and we are ushering in Bay's Theorem with the great alternative rock band, the Smashing Pumpkins, and their mega hit, 1979, one of my faves. Let's get back to it, shall we? All right, Bay's Theorem, wonderful theorem dealing with conditional probability, and in order to sort of illustrate an understanding of it uh, before you see the formula I have procured a couple of donut boxes there with some donuts in in it um, this may seem simplistic but bear with me because it'll help you to understand what Bayes theorem is all about and 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 what it's all about really is kind of adjusting your thinking um, about the probability of something based on some information that you know in advance okay so we got these two donut boxes and we'll call them um, boxes uh, A and box uh, box B but we don't know which one is which okay and in each box there are 20 donuts in box A there are 10 glazed donuts and there are 10 chocolate donuts and in box B there are 20 chocolate donuts, okay? So we get some stiff to uh, come on by, and uh, he sees the uh, boxes, and he closes his eyes, randomly selects a box, and chooses a donut. And lo and behold, uh, this gentleman, he happens to choose, come on, let's see, He's going to choose, oh my goodness, he chose a chocolate donut, okay? Now, I think we all know that uh, the selection of the box, uh, equally likely, so selecting box A or box B uh, would be a one in two chance, right? Um, I specifically like selecting box A. Let's think of it like that. There would be a one in two chance of selecting box A. Um, so we know that this, this dude, uh, comes on in hungry and he snags a chocolate donut, but we just don't know which box it's from. So put that in your back pocket and now we're going to kind of illustrate this in a diagram. Okay. So this represents all of the donuts, this rectangle here. And in order to represent the boxes, I'm going to divide it as nicely as I can into two equal rectangles here. And we'll call this box A, and we'll call this box B. I know it's probably bugging you. I didn't go left to right, but there's a method to my madness. All right, so box B, we know we have, it's totally full of 20 chocolate donuts, okay? So I'm going to represent the chocolate donuts by shading diagonally here and saying that the box is completely full here. And so to represent the amount of chocolate donuts in A, I would shade half of box A. Okay, are we good? All right, we are good. Okay, so just looking at that, what is the likelihood? And that, oh, well, let's back it up. We know that a chocolate donut is selected. And visually, if I had to say, all right, which box did he choose? Was it box A or box B? You would, you would say, well, the, the likelihood is it would be box B because there's twice as many chocolate donuts in box B than there are in box A. Okay. Um, in fact, if we divide these into equal parts, just to illustrate that again, again, two times as many donuts as in um, uh, in box B as in box A. Well, if we know that we selected a chocolate donut, it eliminates this section here. Glazed donuts are out of the picture. Yes? And all we have um, are uh, 
are sections of chocolate donuts. One section in A and two other equally sized sections in B. So it's clear, it is clear that if we know that a chocolate donut um, was selected, the chances that um, the dude uh, selected from box A would be one in three. And the chances that he selected from box B would be two in three. And what we have done without really knowing it is we have used Bayes' theorem. We have used information that we did not previously have um, in that, oh, okay, we have a chocolate donut. We know a chocolate donut is selected. So that uh, means uh, that glazed donuts are off, off the charts. They're, they're out of consideration. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how you can do that same process using Bayes' theorem. And here's Bayes' theorem right here. Okay, Bayes' theorem says that the probability of the event A, given that the event B has occurred, is equal to probability B given A times the probability of A all over the probability of B. Blah, 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 blah. And that looks very complicated. Where the probability of B is equal to this. Okay. Well... I'm going to say that um, A, probability of A, or A is going to represent box A. A is going to represent box A. And B is going to represent that a chocolate donut was selected. Chocolate donut. Okay. So let's work this out. Probability of A given B. Okay. I guess I, I guess I should say what is the probability that uh, the the question I'm asking is what is the probability that um, uh, the donut was selected out of the block uh, box A? And we already know the answer is one third because we showed it visually here. Okay. Well, let's work it with the with Bayes' theorem. Okay, so that would be the probability of B given A. Well, what would be the probability that we selected a chocolate donut given that it came from box A? That's what this means right here, that we selected a chocolate donut given that it came out of box A. Well, that would be one half. So I've taken care of this, yes times the probability of selecting box A all by itself. Well, selecting box A is a one and two shot like we talked about before. He either is going to select box A or box B. So that is also one half. Okay. All over the probability of B. Well, what's the overall probability of selecting a chocolate donut? Well, if we think about our glazed donuts back in here again, it's 30 out of 40 donuts, right, our chocolate. So that would be 3 out of 4. Okay. So quickly you can see that this is 1 out of 4 over 3 out of 4, which, uh, if you're wise, you can see that these cancel, and we have 1 third. Okay. So we use Bayes' theorem to do a very simple problem um, that we had already figured out visually. Okay. Um, so now let's, uh, let's take a look at Bayes' theorem. Um, here, this is just uh, what we had before. Here is a proof if you want to pause and take a look at it. Here's a proof of Bayes' theorem. And this is how it appears in your formula sheet. And so what you need to remember down here is that this is just the probability. This is equivalent to, oh, they have it different. This is reversed here than it is in the book. Okay, probability of B given A, and here it's probability of A given, uh, given B. And probability of B is on the, on the bottom here, so that means this is actually the probability of A, the second listing. Are you following me? So you need to, it, it might uh, help you that the probability of A, um, you might not have to do all this if you know the overall probability of A. Okay, this is really the evidence. The A here is what we know, like it's the chocolate donut. The A would be, oh, we selected the chocolate donut, okay? 
Um, so that's the evidence. So the, the probability of the evidence of what we know is always what goes in the denominator. Did I really say bottom? I apologize to all that is great about mathematics. It's the denominator. Sorry. Um, okay. So here's our example. A can contains four blue and two green marbles. One marble is randomly drawn from the can without replacement, and its color, thank you England, Australia, for the U there, is noted. A second marble is then drawn. Fry, find the probability that A, the second marble is blue, B, the first marble was green, given that the second marble is blue. So they're kind of having setting the plate for us, asking us question A, to use Bayes' theorem. Okay? And what I suggest doing, um, you know, if you're confused, uh, something like this, um, uh, make a tree diagram, okay? But we need to let some events uh, happen first, okay? So let's let um, A um, you know what? No. I'm going to let um, B be the event. I want to use the formula that's uh, that's in your formula sheet here. Let B be the event. Uh, first marble green. First marble selected is green. Okay, and then let A be the event that the second marble selected is blue. Okay, and now we're going to make a, a tree diagram. Okay, sorry about that we're not going in alphabetical order, but I want it to kind of to correspond with our formula here. So I'm going to make a tree diagram. Okay, so first marble, it is either green B or it is not green B prime. Okay, so the probability that it's green, there's two green marbles, so that is two out of six. And you're saying that's one third. I know, but it makes it easier for the rest of the tree diagram. So if it's not green, it is four out of six. And then the probability that it's blue, um, uh, the second marble is blue. Okay, so after I draw a, uh, my first marble, then the second mar marble is either going to be blue or not blue. Same thing here, blue or not blue. Okay, and so uh, we have one marble less, and the first one was green. Okay, remember B is green. Sorry, it's not blue. B is green. I know it's a little confusing. Hang on. Um, so that would be four out of five because there's one less, and there's still four blue marbles. And then, of course, these always have to add up to one, so this is one out of five. Okay, and so if this second one is not green, that means it was blue. That means there's only three blue marbles left. So this would be three out of five, and this would be two out of five. Okay. So the probability that the second marble is blue would be uh, would happen here. Okay. It would be this one, and it would be this one. Okay. So that would be equal to uh, probability of A, second marble of blue. So A, we're going to say that the probability of A is equal to the probability of, right here, B, event B, I'm just copying this formula right here, times the probability of A given B, plus the probability of B prime, uh, times the probability of A given B prime. Okay, so what is that going to look like? Well, that would be probability of B, yes, is the first event that the first marble is green. Okay, um, that is going to, uh, to be um, two out of six. Oops, it's Miss Greeby's birthday tomorrow. Let's snooze that. So that's two out of six. And the probability of A, given that B has occurred, well, that's right here. A, given that B has occurred, is 4 out of 5. 
plus the probability of not B, which is 4 out of 6, uh, times the probability of A, uh, given uh, B naught. Okay, you can't really see that. Let me rewrite that for you. Probability, it's just this right here, sorry. A, I ran out of room. B naught, okay, you get it. So that's 4 out of 6 times 3 fifths. And if you know how to deal with fractions, then that is equal to 2 thirds. Okay. So now we're going to say, find the probability that the first marble was green, given that the second marble is blue. Okay. The first marble was green, given that the second marble was blue. So what we're looking for is the probability of B, given that A has occurred. The first marble uh, is green. Um, find the probability that the first mar marble was green, that's B, given that the second marble was blue. Okay, well that's just equal, that's Bayes' theorem right there. Okay, we already have our denominator right here. That's going to be over um, the probability of uh, B, I'm sorry, probability of A, which is indeed two-thirds, okay? So now all we have to do is the probability that B occurs um, and the probability B that the first marble is green. Well, oh my goodness, all kinds of stuff going on here. Um, and so that is going to be uh, 2 out of 6 times uh, the probability of A given B, which is going to be 4 out of 5. And that is right here. That's where we get that. And if we simplify all of that wonderful, uh, that wonderful fraction work, that boils down to 2 out of 5. Okay. Went overboard, but I, I just wanted to be sure that I explained it thoroughly. Um, I apologize for that. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And boys and girls, we are out.